In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can grant access to the internet to DeepSeek R1 and power up your language model. So what I'm going to be doing is using an open source piece of software called Coach. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be following the self-host instructions and installing them within a Docker container. For Docker, you just need to follow the defaults. Once you've got Docker installed, one thing I found is it's um, worthwhile having Homebrew installed as well. I'm actually um, installing this on my M4 Mac Mini Pro, which has got 24 gig of RAM. M4 Mac Mini Pro. Now, before I get started, I'm going to install Homebrew, and that's just a case of copying the code from the website, pasting it into terminal, and tapping in the password to grant it the privilege to be able to install Homebrew. If you're into machine learning and AI, you've probably got this installed already. Um, this is a brand new machine for me, so um, it's something I needed to get up and running. You can see at the end of the installation process that there's a couple of next steps. It says run these commands in your terminal to add homebrew to your path. So I'm just going to go and do that. So it's just a simple copy and paste of the three commands. So it's just the echo statements. For those that don't know, Homebrew it enables you to install a whole bunch of stuff that your Mac doesn't have by default and is especially going to be useful if you're getting into your AI machine learning and doing things like potentially generating images on your device. So there we go, that's what it's for. So back over to the instructions. I've actually done the um, MKDIR tilde forward slash dot coach and and so um, I did that in the background so I'm actually in that folder now so to get into the dot coach you just need to be in your home directory and do for cd space coach sorry that that's not clear you'll notice that the wget information failed and that's because it's not installed on the machine so heading over to google how do I install wget on my apple mac I got an error message and then I spotted, oh, there's a brew install wget command. I knew I installed homebrew for a good reason. So here you go, here's what it's for. So brew install wget, uh, and that will go and install the wget utility. Very useful to have, and I'm sure if you're doing more and more of this stuff, you'll come back to use it time and time again. So now we have wget on our Mac, we can go and run the command again. So I'm just going to copy it from the Coach website and paste it in here. So again, that will pull the Docker Compose file. So that's what's going to provide the information to be able to build the container. So um, before you can do that, however, you would do need to go and edit the docker-compose.yml file. So this is just like a configuration for the container. So you will need to set a admin username and password and admin email. And also it's a good idea to uncomment the hash before the openai underscore base underscore URL. I forgot to do this first time round and um, had a few issues. So I had to go back later on and uncomment it. So it's towards the end of the file. Save yourself a round trip and go and do that now when you're in here. Um, but yeah, it's just something that I'll come back to in a, in a little while. So I'm just putting some generic uh, content in here. I actually, again, come back and change these values so they're not necessarily fixed. Um, but yeah, it's just... Um, this is for the purposes of the video. I'm just giving you some, some tips on where to get these things installed. So now I'm out of Nano, which is the um, text editor that I used. I can do the docker compose command, which is docker hyphen compose up. And um, what that's going to do is like I say is pull the container information from the internet um, which I believe it's from its github repository and that's then going to 
populate Docker with a coach container. That container will sit alongside the self-hosted AI startup kit, which is basically NAN. And whilst this is all going along, um, because it takes about 10, 15 minutes, dependent on your internet speed, I'm just fast forwarding the video. So I'll get back to you when this is completed. Okay, we can see it's starting to build some containers and it's getting somewhere. The terminal's got to a point where it stopped. And whilst I was going through this and recording the screen, I thought we were ready to um, have a look at the local host port 42110. That is the where the code is actually going to run. But I was a little bit ahead of myself and I hadn't waited for code to installation to fully complete. So this is why it's not opening up when I go to the local host port 42110. So I'm just gonna have to leave it for a little while longer but I don't realize this in the moment. I'm actually looking for evidence that Koji is ready to use. It's not, you know, I'll fast forward to that point. They do say that patience is a virtue and now I can see within the Docker terminal that the Koji object is ready to use. So I'm gonna go back to my browser and reopen and refresh and here we go that's code up and running so um, we're not connected to anything at the moment it's not connected to olama so it's not connected to deep seek and that's going to be the uh, the next step that i run through this took me a little while to fathom out because it appears that there are chat models in here but they i understand that they'll only work if you've got and you've provided code within that docker compose yml you've provided them with api keys i haven't done that i've not made any connections so that's what i need to do with with olama to make changes you need to go into the code admin panel the url is in the instructions but i'll also put it in the description of this video so you tap in your username and password so that's the information you put in your docker compose.yml file and then you can log in it stores that information so you don't need to remember it too many times then within ai models you can add an ai model so we're going to call it olama and we're going to follow the instructions in the code website to an extent and that's because it provides you with information about setting up your local olama however it suggests that you should be using a different url to what you actually need to be and i don't think it fully takes into consideration the fact you've installed code in a docker container but anyway so um, as i mentioned earlier on in the video and sorry for the confusion i do need to go and edit the docker compose yml file so the open ai underscore base underscore url is uncommented and then rerun the docker compose um, it's a bit of a pain so I'm going to stop that go and edit the docker compose in nano rerun the docker compose and then come back to where I ought to be <laughs> um, at this point but again this is this is real life right this is what happens when you're installing something you're following some instructions but you realize you've not followed everything you wanted to to the letter of the law it's a little bit of back and forth and you'll probably find that you have similar experiences you'll realize that you've done something and not something else and uh, need to go and make changes what i'm trying to show you is a what real life's like uh, but b tell you how to avoid these instances so you don't have to go back and make these amendments but you know it is what it is right so that's that done just rerun the uh, docker compose up uh, it should be really quick because of uh, all the packages have been downloaded it just needs to make a um, small configuration change and yeah we're all good to go so code has restarted the containers are all good to go so right i can go back into the browser and i can go start making some changes back in the code admin panel i'm in the ai models apis section and I'm typing in Olama as my name. Don't need to put anything meaningful in the API key, just put something. 
Then this is where you really need to pay attention. So the API base URL is not what's in the code documentation. It took me ages to work this out. So go grab the URL from the description. It's also the same one that you use for an AN. And then save that and you'll see the API chats added successfully. Now, again, this took me a while to wrap my head around what's going on here because I knew I got all the settings right but it wasn't pulling through the models. And what I found is I needed to restart Coge at this point. That fixed everything. So restart the, the whole container, reload it in your browser, and what you'll find is that once everything's loaded up and once all the containers have started properly, things will start falling into place. Again, this is gonna save you loads of time. So do what I say, not what I do. There we go chat models pull through including deep car one right so here we are we're over in the agent section of coach it's got two agents one which is the default i'm just going to completely ignore that and then we've got this other agent which i've created myself and um, what i'm going to do is i'm just going to show you the contents of that by editing it so that you can see some of the the information that's gone into actually making this agent possible so in the basic settings, I've called the agent quick research and I've given it research characteristics. Now, what I've done is I've just gone onto another AI, actually it's Claude in this instance, and I've asked it to give me some features of a AI engine that would be good at researching. So I tweaked it, but this is, this is like 80% of what it gave me. Then I'm going to move through to the next stage and I've got all of the, the models that I can select to work with the with Coge. I'm going to pick DeepSeq R1, the 7 billion parameters. Um, and I'm not bothered about whether this is public or private or protected. And, and it's just because I'm the only person who uses this machine. If somebody else uses it, and I, or if I create other logons, you know, I might want them to be able to access this model. So, again, it's not really a concern for me. You, you want to maybe have a look at that later yourself, depending on your use case. Um, I'm going to skip over the knowledge base for now, but if you are interested in being able to not only draw from the internet, but also draw from your own files, then there will be another video in this series coming down the road and I'll put a, uh, a link to it once it's available. So, you know, keep an eye out for that one. But we'll just skip past that and on to the input tools. Now, you can be as specific or not as you like. By default, all of the tools are enabled and all of the output modes are enabled. I don't have anything set up for image generation just yet or automation just yet. So I've only got text output. So, you know, and, and again, this is open source. So some of these output modes may change in the future, but you can add in via APIs other components. So that's something that I'm going to be f focusing on in the future. But for now, just look into this text mode but I will have them all enabled for future usage. So I'm just going to save that and then I'm going to enter into a chat window with the quick research. And I'm just going to do what is the capital of Peru. And we'll see how it handles that. So you can see it's going, um, it's using online and text and it's searching for the capital of Peru. It's identified the Britannica.com as a potential website to give information around the capital of Peru and actually it's already found it here, the Lima, um, but it's going to go through a reasoning process and just open up Activity Monitor. So if we catch it fast enough we might be able to see it actually doing and drawing from here we go we can see it drawing from the GPU because it's using the GPU to generate this response 
it's going through a bit of a reasoning and it's kind of oh i think it could be machu picchu blah 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 but then it's come up with the right answer at the end now it probably would have come up with that right answer without internet access but more so than anything this proves the process works and it shows you how you can give internet access to your language model which is phenomenal and opens up a world of possibility so if you've liked this one then you might like this video over here too.